Ah, ah, Mike's Daily Podcast. Hello, I'm Cinema Stanley Tucci. No, I'm not. I'm Mike Matthews. Welcome to the show. Stanley Tucci. What a guy. 1,596. Why do I start today's show talking about Stanley Tucci? Because I say the name Stanley Tucci funny. And today we're going to hear from Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player and the brewmaster. We're here at Cafe Anyway, and this is Mike's Daily Podcast. Somewhere in Podcaster Valley, Mont, where I still cannot understand the traffic light there at the corner of Walnut. Mike's Daily Podcast. And Liberty Street in Fremont. Hey, it's a pain in the butt, but hey, it's okay. Because yesterday I talked to some friends and they say, Mike, let's go for a walk with our dogs. You can bring Basil the Boxer and I'll bring my hog. They have hogs. These They walk their hogs. No, they don't. Mike's Daily Podcast. I like to talk about pigs lately on my show. Mike's exactly, Porky. Daily That's how it is. Podcast. But I got to see my friends Katie yeah. and Nick and Stephanie. It's funny. Katie texted me, hey, let's go walking dogs. And then about two hours later, Nick and Stephanie texted me, hey, let's walk some dogs. So Basil was very tired yesterday, and that's fine. <laughs> That's fine. Tired dog's a good dog. And the podcast picture today is Basil the Boxer and I at Carmel Beach. And there's a funny story about that. Look who just walked in. Hi, Mark. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. Hi, y'all doing? That's my horse, Nelly. And it's a disgruntled fiddle player, tell you what. What? I have a lot of important things to say. Some of it is that today is a dark day in history. Don't interrupt me by walking in and pouring your root beer. Hi, Mike. I make the delicious root beer. I'm the brewmaster. Oh, boy. Thank you, brewmaster. Hello, disgruntled fiddle player and Benita. Ha! Ah. Uh. Ha! Huh. They all said hello at the same time. They must be three different people. Yes, it is quite a dark day in history. It's the assassination of Martin Luther King Day. Martin Luther King Jr., it was half a century ago. These are very significant anniversaries when you're half a century. And here's today's podcast picture. Away from something. And I think century marks and half century marks are important. Ten year anniversaries, yeah. Definitely. Quarter century, eh. But you know, when it, when Disneyland was 50 years old, that was a big deal. I think you got in for free one day, didn't you? No? I don't remember. But I think... The picture's not from Disneyland. It's Carmel. And as they were taking this picture, this guy was taking the picture that I met on the beach. He and his lovely girlfriend. And he... <laughs> All of a sudden, this little wave comes up and grabs my shoes and took them a couple feet and got them all wet. And then I was walking in wet shoes the rest of the day in Carmel. That was great. Ah! Sorry. <laughs> but she, uh, he and she were telling me about how they had just been to Costa Rica and they had their stuff on the beach and all of a sudden, a big wave came along and picked up their stuff, their camera, and everything. And everybody else had their stuff on the beach. It was not It was like a rogue wave, and they weren't expecting it. And so everybody was running after their stuff. So he said to me, I know what you're going through. But the thing is, when you lay down anything on the beach, be aware that in seconds, it could be snapped up. Either by a thief... A beachcomber, a beachcomber thief, somebody on the beach. I'm leading up to something, and here it is. Chris Rhea might take your stuff. And his beautiful, his beautiful voice and guitar sounds talking about on the beach. Or you might like Rhea's song, Fool If You Think It's Over. No? I'm working on it. I guess I got a little sidetracked. 
the point being, the guy was also, when he was taking the picture, trying to block out. There's a woman actually behind me in the picture that's walking in the surf. And he goes, I'm trying to angle this so that she disappears and you're, you're, you and your dog are just in the picture. Thank you. It was very nice. And actually, that angle is pretty cool because you get the expanse of the beach and Carmel and everything. So thank you so much, sir, that you probably aren't listening to this podcast and we will never speak again. But the friends of mine said to me that when we were at Fairmont Ridge in Podcaster Valley, stop talking about Fairmont Ridge. It's getting so freaking crowded there. Whenever we go with our dogs, there are all these people and notably... People that don't have dogs are showing up. What's that all about? As our president says, who's getting hit with, we're getting hit with tariffs and now the stock market is going to take a major dive today. What was that all about? Because of you, you idiot. Yeah, we're going to start tariffs to protect the The United States. And yeah, nothing's going to happen. Stupid. What an idiot. Ugh. So you know that song that he sings or that poem? It's a poem, actually, which is funny because on Northern Exposure, they actually sang a song about it, uh, about a snake. Uh, he goes, to, he always talks about immigrants like they're snakes, even though he's married to an immigrant. And he talks about how, oh, yeah, you can't let the immigrants in because they're snakes. And they, the, it was Northern Exposure did this song. Of the the snake, oh, I wonder if they have it. The Shelly, the really hot blonde, sang it. Cynthia Geary. Her way to work one morning down the. That's oh, a horrible copy. The lake. Yeah. Now I'm gonna tell you. Oh, shut up, you silly one. Sit the reptile with a grin. Yeah, so she sings uh, that. Uh, did you? I she the snake bites the girl. She dies, and he's like, "Don't you know I'm a snake?" Well, that's the same story that Trump tells all the time about how you let immigrants in and they're snakes and they bite you. I don't know if he's talking about his wife. Ah, oh, take my wife, please. She's a snake. I don't know, but Jackie Mason maybe knows. I don't know, but he. Just doesn't. So, I guess my point is the people that voted Trump in that thought, nah, he's not going to be that bad. Uh, maybe you should listen to that snake story. Because I think you've let a snake into the White House. Because he's moving things along. We had to make the move and we decided to make the move. And they made the tariff move and it looks like it's a bad move. And I hope I don't lose all, in my, all my money in the stock market. What little I have. Uh, and then he wants to build the wall. I say it's better to get along with Russia than not. Oh, wait. He wants Putin to come over first. And then he wants to build the wall. That's right. I would build a great wall. And nobody builds walls better than me, believe me. And I'll build them very inexpensively. And what did Gary Shandling say uh, about the wall? Didn't they try the fence thing at the Alamo? Didn't we try that? <laughs> Didn't they build the wall? And then the Mexicans had what they call a ladder. <laughs> This show is all over the place. It's a nightmare of a show. It's going all over the place. Thank you, Ann Coulter. No, actually, that's the very beautiful Dina DiLorenzo. Ay, yay, ay, she beautiful. The point being that uh, Basil and I had a great time at Carmel, and sometimes you need to go and get away. And, and, uh, and, and oh, my friend tells me, so I've got these 30-something-year-old friends that are complaining about all the graffiti in Podcastro Valley. What's that all about? To quote our president. And th- they are so... Mike, why is there this... What was that all about? Why is there all this graffiti? And it's ridiculous graffiti. We're from San Francisco, says my friend. I grew up in San Francisco. We had meaningful graffiti there. Okay? I don't... I just, as a rule, don't like graffiti. So I like art. And I have a tough time defaming people's property as saying that's art. But, you know, use that creativity in another way is what I'm saying. But, yeah, he so we were discussing graffiti because in the on Fairmont Ridge property, 
the park, there's this fenced off area that used to be actually a guardsman outpo- outpost, a little guard office uh, hut type thing where they would sit there and protect, I guess, what used to be a missile launching area at Fairmont Ridge. There's a lot of that in the Bay Area, a lot of military places. We forget how important a military outpost San Francisco was, protecting the Bay, protecting the gold. You had Alcatraz was a fort at one time. And so we have this little outpost sitting there that's fenced off. And somehow these kids got in there, or I don't know what they were, if they were kids or not, got in there and wrote, uh, let's see, 666, because I guess they're ridiculous Satanists. And I think they wrote an expletive in this black paint. And it's just ridiculous. Why do you do graffiti? And so we were discussing graffiti in Castro Valley, and it, it needs to stop. It's, it's have respect for other people's property. Have respect for your own property. Have respect for your body. People are disrespecting their bodies in big ways. But now I've gotten off topic because the topic was important. And the topic was my friend saying, my other 30-something-year-old friend saying she went to a hair salon and spent $450. But she didn't know that the cost of this salon excursion was going to be that much until she got the bill at the end of it. And she had spent four hours there, and they probably cut all of like three hairs, put her hair through this deep dyeing process, taking care of her roots, etc. And four hours later, $450. And she, it was apparently the salon that Mark Zuckerberg used to go to. Ooh, Mark Zuckerberg. And I just, be careful of all this ridiculous stuff that you hear about, oh, you get the bill ahead. Of, how much is this going to cost? She says, I should have asked that, but I don't want to look cheap. And that's what is something we have to look cheap. Otherwise, we're it ain't going to be cheap. Drop the the, just Facebook. That's right. Just because the head of Facebook goes there. We have a basic responsibility to protect people's data. And if we can't do that, then we don't deserve to have the opportunity to serve people. You don't have the opportunity. Let me check my Facebook today. Hey, it was on this date a year ago that I posted on Facebook a show called Trust. Because I like the one word type shows, which I have no idea at this point what, what one word I'm going to use for today's show. It's nothing's popping into my head at the moment and I wrote other than high prices and crazy drivers the Bay Area is a great place to live with lots of scenic trails to walk oh how no wonder no one ever comments or posts on or reads my posts because I write crap but that's what I had a year ago and oh this picture from Lynchburg Tennessee Where they have this sign. This is where they make the Jack Daniels whiskey. No loitering after 7 p.m. Is what this picture is. Because it's the South. And you can't be... And they put signs up. And you know how I feel about signs. Mike Matthews, do you have lots of facts and filler music to listen to? Or do I have to download This American Life instead? That was in a cartoon that I had. How long ago was this cartoon? This was two years ago. So not quite an anniversary yet, huh? It has to be at least 10 years or half a millennium or half a century or... Hey, what were we talking about here? Okay. So yeah, the the 50-year anniversary of Martin Luther King Jr. shot by James Earl Ray at the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee. And I guess that is correct in the U2 song early morning April 4 shots rang out in the Memphis sky free at last free at last they took your life they could not take your pride in the name of love one more in the name of love so today is a huge huge day Um, his death shocked a country rocked by riots civil discord and a controversial war such a crazy year that year that the Oakland Museum had a 1968 retrospective five years ago when it wasn't really in an anniversary yet. It was the 45th anniversary. But the YouTube shooter told family members she hated YouTube. 
A woman who believed she was suppressed by YouTube and told her family members she hated the company opened fire at the YouTube headquarters in California yesterday, wounding three people before taking her own life. Thankfully, it, it could have been a lot worse, right? Sad she's gone, but jeez. When I first heard about uh, YouTube getting people getting shot there, I'm like, oh no. I, it just, you know, you hear that number, the numbers of the dead start to increase and your, your heart sinks. But that, not the case yesterday, but still law enforcement officials with knowledge of the investigation said that Nassim Agdem had a long-standing dispute with the company. They had apparently, stopped, you know, they changed their algorithm or whatever it is where people don't get paid the way they used to. I've never gotten paid by YouTube. I don't care. But apparently she did. And the official who spoke on the condition of anonymity because they were not authorized to discuss the case said she used the, the name Nassim Sabs online, this person. A website in that name decried YouTube's policies and said the company was trying to suppress content creators. Also in the news, CDC drug-resistant nightmare bacteria pose a growing threat. Nightmare bacteria with unusual resistance to antibiotics of last resort were found more than 200 times in the U.S. last year in a -a first-of-a-kind hunt to see how much of a threat these rare cases are becoming. That's more than they had expected to find. And the true number is probably higher because the effort involved only certain labs in each state. The problem mostly strikes people in hospitals and nursing homes who need IVs and other tubes that get they, that can get infected. In many cases, others in close contact with these patients also harbored the superbugs, even though they weren't sick, and that's a risk for further spread. Some of the sick patients had traveled for surgery or other health care to another country where drug-resistant germs are more common. And the superbug infections were discovered after they returned to the U.S. That's why nobody should ever leave the U.S. And we have to build a wall. The U.S. stock index futures tumbled today. By the time you hear this, who knows, maybe the stock market went up. But it doesn't look good at this point because of the potential trade war between the U.S. and China. Indonesia has an oil spill, state of emergency declared. Uh, Indonesian authorities have declared a state of emergency over an oil spill off the Southeast Asian country's coast as it continues to spread, causing environmental and economic damage. That's what Indonesia is dealing with, an oil spill. Like we had to deal with, what was that, eight years ago, seven years ago, the BP oil spill. Lockheed Martin has won nearly a quarter billion dollar NASA contract to develop a plane capable of supersonic speed without creating a sonic boom. I've been hearing about this. The cost plus NASA contract valued at $247 million will allow the defense contractor's secretive Skunk Works division, Skunk Works, to continue develop of a Lockheed Martin quiet supersonic technology aircraft, otherwise known as Quest, with two S's. Under the low boom flight demonstration contract, Lockheed Martin will design and build an experimental airplane with NASA, uh, and the flight test will be at the end of 2021. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. Next show, it will be Madame Rutabaga, Valentino, and Bison Bentley. Thanks for listening to the show. Hey, go and walk with someone today. So when, and listen to them complain about graffiti and high salon costs and crazy lights at the corner of Walnut and Liberty Street in Fremont. It's the thing to do is to be and enjoy. Thanks. That was episode 1596. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.